I'm going to show you how you can use Juicebox to transparently raise funds on Ethereum for whatever it is that you're working on. And by the end of this video, you'll have a project set up that looks something like this. Uh, so as you can see at the top, there's information about the project. On the right hand side, people can either pay your project directly in ETH or they can purchase one of these NFTs down here, uh, which you can set up. And there's also a real time feed of all of these payments and other events taking place down here. And then on the left hand side, you can see information about the funds coming into a project and also information about how a project is set up. Uh, but the protocol does much more than just accept payments. It also mints tokens and you can set up complex tokenomics for those tokens. Uh, it allows you to fully automate your payroll uh, and do a bunch of other stuff. And the best way to understand these different mechanisms is to actually uh, go through the process of setting up a project. So that's what we'll be doing today. And to start, I recommend going to gorly.juicebox.money, uh, which is the testnet version of Juicebox. And then once you feel confident, you can deploy to mainnet on juicebox.money. Uh, but the steps are the same on both sites. So to start, connect your wallet. Uh, in my case, that's MetaMask and click on create a project. The first thing we'll be setting up is the project details. Uh, that's this information up here. So we'll be naming our project Space Bananas uh, and we'll give it a description of bananas in space and we will upload our logo. Uh, this cowboy is pretty cool, so that'll be our project logo. And then optionally, if you'd like, you can put some links uh, on your project page. So we could link to a website. We'll just link to juicebox.money for the example. You can put a Twitter handle, it'll automatically generate the link, and you can also put a Discord invite. As an aside, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to join this Discord server and ask the questions in there. People will be able to help you out, and that link will be in the video description as well. Uh, last thing on the details is you can customize the pay button. So by default, uh, that button says pay. As you can see, this project uh, set it to play, and that's the button that people have to click when they're paying your project. So we'll set ours to say donate, and we'll give a little disclosure before people pay. We'll say, warning, this is a donation only. Once we're happy with this, we can click next and move on to our funding cycle. A funding cycle is a set period of time in which the project settings are locked. Uh, you can kind of think of this like rug pull protection or something of that nature, uh, where if we set automated funding cycles, and we set the duration to 14 days, that means that for the next 14 days, whatever we set up in here is going to be locked and we can't change that. So that means that when people are uh, contributing to our project, they know that at least for the next 14 days, they're not gonna get rug pulled. Uh, and this is really useful for building trust. If you need the flexibility of being able to change things at any time, you can set up manual funding cycles, but it's usually better to use automated funding cycles. Uh, and I generally recommend to have a funding cycle duration of somewhere from three to 14 days, uh, depending on how much flexibility you need. So for this project, we'll do a 14 day funding cycle. Next, we're gonna move on to our funding target. And the funding target is the amount of funds which we can pull out of the project every funding cycle. Uh, so if we're doing a fundraiser or some other thing where we wanna raise as much money as possible, we can do an infinite funding target. And this means that we can pull all of the money that's in the project out of it at any time. But if we want to do salaries or something else that we have ongoing costs for, we can do a specific funding target. Uh, and this is a, a target that happens once per funding cycle. Uh, so let's say we set it to 10,000 US dollars. That means every funding cycle, which in our case is 14 days, we can pull $10,000 worth of ETH out of the treasury. And you can set this in ETH as well, so 10 ETH. Uh, but if you set it to USD, it's just 10,000 USD worth of ETH. Uh, one thing to note uh, or to keep in mind is that uh, any funds raised over that funding target are considered overflow and are redeemable by our contributors. Uh, so we'll get more into that a little bit later, but uh, the, the, the general idea is that this $10,000 is reserved for us and then everything else in the treasury, uh, the community can redeem their tokens for if they'd like. Uh, the tokens which they receive when they pay your project. Uh, so next, we're going to move on to the payouts. This is just what we're doing with that funding target we just set. Uh, so in our case, what we're doing with this $10,000. If you want, you can do specific amounts and you can say $3,000 to this person or something like that. But in our case, we just want to do a 50-50 split with our friend. So we're going to add our friend's address here by clicking that button and then typing in their address, django.eth. And then we'll give them 50% and we click add payout. So you can see this payout pops up down here. This is our friend's address. 
And then we're actually done because by default, the remaining 50% goes to the project owner, uh, which in this case is us. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this is where fees are going to be coming out of. Uh, so if you have a distribution or a payout to a wallet like this, uh, then there's going to be a 2.5% fee on that. But one other option is if you do a payout to another Juicebox project, there are no fees. Uh, so if we did a payout to Juicebox project number one, which is Juicebox DAO, uh, and we did 50% distribution to them, we wouldn't have any fees on that. Uh, one more thing, and I apologize for, for this tangent, but when you are paying out to a Juicebox project, uh, tokens are minted when you pay that project. So you need to decide where those tokens are, go, uh, are, are going to go, and that's what that token beneficiary address is. So if I make that my address, philipv.eth, uh, then those tokens will be minted to my wallet. But we don't actually want to do this since we're just doing a 50-50 split with our friends. So I'll click cancel and we can move on to our project token settings. Uh, so our project token is the token that's minted whenever people contribute to our project. If this is a little bit overwhelming, I recommend the default token settings. They're very good and as you learn more about the protocol, you can change these things. Uh, so, so these settings are a good starting place and then you can update them in the next funding cycle. But since this is an in-depth tutorial, uh, we'll go for the custom token settings. Uh, so the first thing you can change is your initial mint rate. That's the number of tokens which are minted per each ETH contributed. A million is a good number. Uh, don't worry about this number too much. It, do it doesn't matter that much. The reserve tokens is a percentage of tokens which you can set aside. Uh, so... This mint rate is 1 million, so if I pay 1 ETH, a million tokens are minted. But if someone sets a reserved rate of 40%, then what happens is if I'm the person who paid the ETH, I'm only getting 600,000 uh, or 60% of those tokens, and that 40% that we set up here, so 400,000 tokens, is reserved for us, and we can give those tokens to whoever we want. Um, so let's say we want to give some of the tokens to our friend Django. We can put his address in here, and we can give him half of the reserve tokens, 50%. And then the remaining reserve tokens are reserved for us, the project owner. But you can, of course, add many different addresses here, or you can even reserve tokens for another juice box project. Uh, once you're done with that, you can set up a discount rate. Uh, a discount rate is a way of making your tokens uh, more expensive over time, basically. Uh, so let's say we are starting with 1 million tokens per ETH, but we want those tokens to get more and more expensive over time. We can set a discount rate of 5%, for example. So what happens is next funding cycle, 5% fewer tokens will be minted per ETH. And then the funding cycle after that, that will be reduced again by 5%. So with the 5%, with the you can see it'll be 950,000 tokens per ETH next funding cycle. 902,500 uh, 902, tokens in the funding cycle after that, and so on and so forth. Uh, I don't typically recommend setting a discount rate too high. Uh, if you're looking to do something long-term, uh, something like 2% may work, but even this is quite aggressive. Uh, so we'll leave our discount rate at zero for now. The other lever which you can move around is the redemption rate. So as I mentioned earlier, when people have your project tokens, they can redeem those for a pro rata share of the overflow. Um, and pro rata just means proportional, and overflow is, as I mentioned earlier, that amount in excess of whatever your funding target is. Feel free to go back if this is uh, too many buzzwords at once, I apologize. But uh, the redemption rate will allow you to control how much people will be able to redeem proportionately. So by default, at 100%, if I have 1% of the tokens, I can redeem those tokens for 1% of the overflow. If the redemption rate is 0%, that means that I won't be able to get any ETH from the treasury uh, when I redeem my tokens. But you can put this redemption rate somewhere in the middle to kind of compromise between the two. So if I set a low redemption rate like this, people will only be able to get a little bit of the ETH which they contributed. They'll only be able to get a minor refund. If you set it a little bit higher, they'll be able to get more of a refund. Um, and the general idea is this encourages people to leave uh, ETH in the treasury for longer or to be the last one to redeem, basically, uh, because the people who redeem earlier will get a proportionately less share of the redemptions. Uh, this is re redemption along a bonding curve. If this is a little bit, uh, you know, overcomplicating things, don't worry about it. Most projects don't need to worry about this. And you can usually either set this to 100% or 0%. So we'll leave it at 100% for now. Uh, and then the last option on this page is to allow token mintings. 
uh, allow token minting. And this would just allow us as the project owner to mint tokens wherever we want, but we'll leave that off. Uh, next, we'll move on to our NFTs. The NFTs are these unlockable NFTs down here, and we can add however many that we want. So in our case, let's add our first NFT. Once you click add NFT, it'll bring you to this NFT menu. You upload your image. So I'll upload this coder. Uh, we can give it a name. Uh, we can give it a description. Our coder NFT. Uh, we can put a minimum contribution. So this is the minimum amount someone would need to pay into your treasury to receive this NFT. Uh, so we'll make it 0 0.1 ETH. Uh, and then we'll give it a limited supply. So we only want the first 50 people to be able to get these. You can also put a link uh, which is associated with the NFT. Uh, if you want to put a link to some more information or something like that, you can do so there. Then click add NFT and we'll add one more NFT. So we'll add another image. We'll put this announcer, give it a name, the announcer. This is our announcer NFT. And then uh, we can make this one a little bit cheaper, maybe 0.05. And we'll make a few more of these. So the first 100 people who want these can get them. And we'll put a link to juicebox.money just so you can see what a link looks like on them. We'll add the NFT. And then you can keep adding NFTs if you want. I'm fine with just these two. Uh, so I'll move on to the bottom where we can set the collection name. Uh, we'll name it Space Bananas Collection. And you can set the symbol. We'll set it like that. Uh, and and these, these pieces of information will be displayed on OpenSea and other uh, trading platforms like that. And then you can set a description. Uh, we'll just leave it as the default. NFTs rewarded to Space Bananas juice box contributors. Uh, and then option, optionally, if you'd like, you can set up a pop-up to show after someone buys an NFT. So we'll just put a little thank you message. Thank you for uh, buying our NFT. And then we'll put a button for them to learn more. And that's going to link to uh, this website, info.juicebox.money. Uh, you can see a preview by clicking this. It looks something like that. And then once you're happy with the NFTs, you can move on to the reconfiguration rules. These reconfiguration rules are closely related to your funding cycles. Uh, so the more astute of you uh, may have realized that there's a problem with the funding cycles, at least by default, which is that the 14-day funding cycle is useful, but if I try to rely on this for, for my safety uh, in not getting rug pulled, the project owner could reconfigure this at the last second, right before the next funding cycle started, uh, and change a bunch of things without people knowing. So the reconfiguration rules are a way of preventing that last second change. So if you have a three-day delay set up, uh, what happens is you need to submit the reconfiguration at least three days before the next funding cycle. And if you don't do that, then it rolls over to the funding cycle after that. Uh, which gives the community three days to look over the changes and see if everything's good. And if they disagree, they can redeem their tokens for the ETH, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, so you can do a three-day delay, seven-day delay, no delay if you need the flexibility, or you can use a custom strategy down here. Uh, but I recommend the three-day delay. It's usually a good default. There are some other advanced rules down here, uh, but you probably don't need to worry about them for now. So we can just move on to the review page. Uh, so this page shows you all of the things that you set up. It shows you your logo. If you expand these boxes down here, you can see the different things you set up. You can see your NFTs down here, for example. Uh, so give your project another look over. Make sure everything looks good to you. And once you're ready, uh, check the box down here after reading this and click Deploy Project. Okay, I've had an error. I'm going to try reconnecting my wallet. Let's see if that fixes it. There we go. So it'll prompt us to deploy our project. We can scroll down. Uh, there's a gas fee for deploying a project, but none of that goes to Juicebox. That's just for paying the network fee. And you click Confirm, and your transaction will start. One thing to note is if the transaction fee is a little bit too high for you, adding NFTs to your project does increase the gas price pretty significantly. Uh, so that can be a good thing to remove if you're trying to reduce the gas fee for deploying your project. So we'll give this a second here to finish. And it looks like our project has been deployed successfully. So I'm going to click on go to projects and it should load momentarily. So once you get to the project page, you'll have these options presented to you. 
to set a project handle, issue an ERC20 token, or create a payment address. You don't need to worry about these. You can do these later. Uh, so as our project page loads, you can see the details we set up are all here, uh, the, as are the links and the logo. My internet is a little bit slow, but if it were faster, you would be seeing those NFTs up here. Uh, and you'll also see different options for us. Uh, so unlike the project page we saw earlier, uh, since we're the project owner, we have options here to edit payouts, edit the allocation, reconfigure upcoming funding cycles, and, and do other things like that. And there's some more options available to us in the tools drawer where we can create payment addresses and things like this, uh, and also in the project settings. So if we go to the project settings, it'll give us the option to change all of these things about our project, transfer ownership, archive the project, set up governance, or do something else. If you have any questions, as I said, uh, please join the Juicebox Discord. I'll put a link to that in the description, and you can ask.